Welcome. Our Rotary meeting is now officially open. I realize that people are still getting their lunch, so please continue. At this time, Connor Jarvis will do our invitation. Connor? Thank you very much, Linda. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's hard to keep track of all of the, you know, what today is. If you ever look at that, you know, I Googled Wait. that. Of course, Google tells me that it's Tuesday, but always, you know, what national day is it? Can't hear him. There's like 10. It's national what day right now. There's, there's like 10 of those. But to my knowledge, it's National Teacher Day or Teacher Appreciation Week. You know, we've had several educators and have several educators in our club at, at all levels. Collegiate, uh, K through 12. And uh, I just want to take a moment to share a couple of quotes about just teachers and appreciation and their impact, and then a brief just prayer for, for teachers uh, and those that have touched all of our lives. I'm sure we can all think fondly back to our favorite teacher or teachers uh, and just the impact that they've had on us and, and their continued impact. So, um, first quote tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn from Ben Franklin. Um, the next I wanted to share that was great is education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire by William Butler Yates. And then the last one I'm sure many of us have heard, but I think it's a great one. A teacher affects eternity. He or she can never tell where his or her influence stops by Henry D. Adams. So I think if we all just take a moment and think back to, uh, again, an educator, uh, whether they, they were a mentor, a friend, or even a, even a coach, someone that's impacted in our life in a profound way, and just give thanks to those folks. Um, and then reach out to them if you're still able to today and, and just thank them. So uh, a prayer for teachers I found I thought was fitting. Almighty God, we come to you today and give thanks for all of our teachers. Thank you for the way in which they give up themselves each and every day in the classroom, serving and instructing the next generation of this land. We thank you for them all now. Father, please fill their hearts with courage now by your mighty spirit. Fill them with your strength so they may rise to every challenge and not grow weary. Fill them with your wisdom so that they may be able to make good judgment when guiding and helping others. Fill them with your peace so that when stress and anxiety comes, it does not overwhelm them. Fill them with your joy so that the passion they have for their subject will become an infectious passion that spreads. We ask all of this in your wonderful name. Amen. Thank you, Connor. At this time, if everyone please stand and we'll say the pledge to our wonderful, beautiful flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much, and you may be seated. Our four-way test, your focus of things we think, say, and do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you so much. I'm Linda Farkas. I'm president-elect for 22-23. Um, it's an honor to be here uh, in front of um, our Zoom folks and uh, most of all, our wonderful Rotarians that have joined us today in spite of the rain. At this time, um, David Hall, our handsome reader, well, um, welcome our guest, Dave. Get those glasses fixed or whatever. Um, so we have uh, one guest, Connor. You have a guest, Joe. Is it not from the Ripple Company? Would you like to? Yeah, um, Joe. So Joe's our our guest speaker as well. Uh, so I know he'll be sharing about himself. Otherwise, I, I'd let you go, but I hope you got, you know spoil it all. But uh, uh, Joe joined us. Uh, he's an entrepreneur. 
and also a soon-to-be graduating senior at Walsh University has a spectacular story to share. Uh, no, no pressure on that front or anything, but gotten to know Joe recently and uh, was really excited to have him share his story here. So um, he'll be coming up, but I think that's our only guest uh, for the day, Dave. So thank you. Thank you, Connor. And I don't believe we have any guests online. So Linda, back to you. Wow, that was fast. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, thank you. Do we have any wonderful Rotary ambassadors that have been out visiting our clubs? Anyone here? How about online? Any uh, any of our folks been out and about uh, visiting? No hands are up. I don't see any. Online, I would like to say hello in particular to Mary Weaver. Mary, it's good to see you. And John Daly, it's good to see you. Cindy's waving hello, it's good to see you. Mary Weaver, it's really, really good to see you. It's good to see all of our friends online. Thank you. So Dave, back to you. You probably just sat down. Do we uh, have happy dollars this morning as you carry your tray of food back? Down. All right, who's happy? I, I'm very happy, but it's pretty usual. I'm not carrying cash on me. So the, the International Bank of McGregor, the loan shark, is not here right now. Otherwise, I've borrowed from him in the past, but all right, Melody. I'm happy. So I will do happy dollar for Connor. Congratulations on your uh, your new family member, your new son. How cute. Wonderful. Um, we also just wrapped up volunteer month, uh, celebration month. So I wanted to give a shout out to a few people. Uh, being part of the YMCA, Akron Rotary Camp is part of the YMCA. We're operated by them and have been since the 1980s. We were part of their annual uh, Volunteer of the Year celebration. So last week we celebrated two uh, student volunteers, Dan Reynolds' daughter, Kaylee, and her friend Mia, who volunteered in the summer out at our Portage uh, County Happy Day site for summer camp. And then Dr. Doug Hoskinen, who's an amazing uh, Rotarian and also a good friend of camp and is always willing to help volunteer wherever needed. And then on Saturday, uh, they led a charge and we had volunteers at Rotary Camp. So wanted to give them all a shout out for coming out. They, Cindy Kane came out, Laura Smiley, Linda Farkas, uh, Tom Knauer, um, Lauren Holly, and her family came. David Hall, who was seen on the roof, blowing off uh, the roof and all the gutters. Thank you. And then um, also uh, Julie Brando was there from Metis. And then we had a Metis volunteer come out and brought uh, students with him to help do a cleanup. So, you know, it takes a village. Rotary has, you know, was founded by Rotarians and they have been volunteering at camp uh, for 98 years and we couldn't do it without them. So, and also a big shout out to Amanda. She runs our volunteer and does an amazing, amazing job of recruiting volunteers to come out. So thank you everybody. Thank you, Mella. Five happy dollars there. Who else is happy? Dave Hall, all right. And here we're trying to make sure there's not Yes, uh, so I have uh, three happy dollars. Number one, uh, happy that I got the volunteer camp this weekend. Uh, probably the dumbest thing get up on that roof, but uh, I survived and break a leg. So, uh, number two, still looking for indicators and greeters. So, if you're interested, please reach out to me or go online. And lastly, my daughter and my son made it to Seattle, um, where she started her job at Seattle Children's Hospital yesterday. So, happy that she made it out there safely and, and uh, started a new uh, little three year career here. Thank you, Dave. And uh, let me apologize. Same did include me in that memo about volunteering at camp. I'd like to thank my uh, 
my new baby excuse is still valid. So forgive me for my lack of attendance. Completely slipped my mind. So, <laughs> all right, Karen, you are up. Uh, one of those dollars is for you since you don't carry cash, so you can say when you're thankful. Um, and I am uh, a week late, and I wasn't here last week, but I just wanted to thank Terry and everyone that did scholarships. It was such a nice event, and it was amazing to see the young people that got the scholarships that came um, from our our club. It's going to be amazing. I'd love to even hear what they do, Terry. I'm putting a, that in your ear to hear about um, what they are doing years from now, but they just did some amazing people that I met. Thank you so much, Karen. Anyone else happy here or anyone on Zoom that's happy and wants to mail in? Oh, all right, Jim, coming around. Do the Jeopardy music while I walk over there. All right, Mr. Edmund. Connor, I do remember when I had young kids and I would go to the camp. So you can get just give some happy dollars right now. We won't be too hard on it, but I like to give five happy dollars. Uh, Thane did catch me at Firestone Country Club in the afternoon and let me know that they had just all been at the camp and I was playing golf on Saturday morning. But I am happy to let everybody know that uh, at this time of year, one of the local companies called Belmark, which is headquartered nationally out in Springside, they have a global gift fund. And uh, on behalf of the camp, in my honor, they awarded an $8,300 gift to the camp. So I especially for I was playing that golf. Thank you. I guess I guess that suffices. So no, congratulations on that, Jim, into the camp. That's phenomenal. Anyone else happy here? Uh, I think uh, that is it for now, unless I'm missing anyone online. All right, Linda, back to you. Thanks, Connor. <clears throat> uh, Karen uh, has a short announcement about our bylaws. Uh, today, we were supposed to vote on it as a club, and she will give you an update on where we're at with our bylaws. Hi, everyone. Um, between online, and thank you to those of you that came physically today, but we don't have enough people to vote. Um, we need 47, um, we have 10 people, I guess, online. Um, thank you for those of you who came online because I knew some people emailed me and were fitting in just to do the vote. Um, we will announce another date. Um, yes, I emailed everyone yesterday. People were confused whether they had to be here or in person or online. You can be here either way, um, but we will have to um, pick another uh, date and we'll get it out to everybody. Thanks, Karen. Um, again, our attendance is important and we can't move forward with um, ratifying our bylaws. We don't have enough people present and we do need 47. So if you're online, if you wouldn't mind sharing your picture, we would love to see you um, and that you're with us. Uh, we'll see you in we'll see you in person. Thank you, Colleen. Uh, it's good to see you. We'll see you in person, but then we don't put a name with with a picture. So if you're online, um, please do us the favor of showing us uh, your wonderful, wonderful photograph. Thank you so much for those that oblige. At this time, um, if there's no other announcements, may, anybody would like to um, say, make any announcements? Anyone online would like to make an announcement? All right, we'll move forward and uh, we're going to call Connor back up to do the introduction of our guest speaker. Everyone's probably sick of seeing me. John Daly, are you tired of seeing me up here? I know my long invitations to <laughs> sometimes get people. So, no. Uh, Guys, uh, again, thanks to everyone for being here. So uh, our guest speaker today and uh, a guest of mine, Joe, now I, I'll kind of keep it brief because I don't want to eat into his time. He's got a wonderful story to share, but I uh, first got to know Joe through my involvement with Walsh University. I uh, was at 
uh, an event to uh, just uh, commemorate some of their um, programming in the sciences and technologies and Shimazu Corporation is a uh, leader in scientific equipment and technologies. That was what the event was for uh, in my connection at Walsh, Dan Passerini, who has uh, been a guest here before, if anyone remembers him, and Dr. Tim Collins of Walsh University. But um, Dan Passerini, after the event, Joe was recognized and said, you know, this is a, I don't even want to call him a, a student, just a sharp young man that you've got to get to know. And uh, Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, at, while being a full-time student and as a senior at Walsh, he's, he's launched three companies. Um, the most successful, I would say, of them, and his current one, and the one that he'll be speaking about as part of the story is, is Ripple. And Ripple, he, he got the inspiration for the company, um, kind of modeled it after Tom's, this Tom Shoe company. So I think Blake Mikoski, the, the founder of Tom's, where you know a legitimate for-profit business that's also focused on doing good in the world, and uh, and and the, the good in the world that, that Joe and his team at Ripple have been doing is drilling wells in Africa. And just I don't want to steal the thunder, but but it sounds like they're up to twenty wells now. Uh, you had shared with me when when I got here a few moments ago, and again. Joe's doing all of this while finishing his degree, and, and uh, I think you all are just blown away at, at his professionalism, his message, uh, and what he's managed to accomplish in just his short time at Walsh and the bright future ahead of him. So with that, I'll, I'll let Joe share the, uh, share, or take the stage and, and share his story. So thanks, Joe. Hi, guys. Um, are we able to... How are you guys doing today? Yeah, I wish I was sunny now. Yeah, things a little better, but uh, cool. <clears throat> so my name is Joe. Uh, I'm a senior finance major at Walsh University, and this Saturday I'm finally done to graduate and focus on Ripple uh, full time. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, but to get a little bit more background, I really like to be more conversational. Um, but this presentation is from uh, a business competition that I just recently competed at in Chicago uh, back in end of February, I think is when it was. But they took the best 25 on student entrepreneurs from all over the country. They had us all in this one area at the University of Chicago. And it was put on by an Entrepreneurs Organization. It's a group of more than 15,000 entrepreneurs worldwide in over 45 different countries. So I kind of condensed that slideshow. It's the first time I'm giving it like this, so bear with me. Um, but while I was there, I was also awarded the United States Student Entrepreneur of the Year. Um, and we'll get to represent the United States here in the month of May at the Global Finals. And I'm super excited that I'm here in front of you guys representing the U.S. and hopefully we'll make everyone proud. But yeah, USA. <laughs> No, but our story goes something like this. Uh, like Connor mentioned, I started other businesses in the past, but I really felt like I wasn't making an impact in the world. So I was making a bunch of money, but I stopped that and I laid in my dorm room bed asking myself, what problems are there in the world? And growing up, I always heard my mom say, eat your green beans and drink your water before you get up from the dinner table because there's kids on the other side of the world that don't have that luxury. And so I laid in my bed and I looked over at my roommate whose name's Chip. His name's actually Chip on his first certificate. I didn't believe him at first either. But um, <laughs> so I looked over at Chip and I said, Chip, what are the odds I solved the world water crisis? And he said, no, you're, you're crazy. Somebody else would have already done this by now. Like Bill Gates has been working on this problem. Like if, if somebody was going to solve it, they would have done it by now. And I'm a super competitive person. I don't like being told I can't do something. And I did some research and I found out that you could partner with nonprofits and drill a well for between $8,000 and $20,000. But I didn't want to start my own nonprofit because I, I just don't like asking people for money, to be honest. And so I did even more research. And what I was trying to figure out was, can I leverage a product with a purpose to solve this problem so that way I could add value to the consumer? And what I landed on was the fact that industry leader Hydroflask and Yeti are able to source their bottles for just under $6 and they sell them for $45 and $50 respectively. And so there's so much margin there that I felt that I could source those same bottles under a private label name, which is Ripple, um, and, and do some, some really good work with it. So in March of 2020, I ended up spending all my money I had saved and had left over from the other businesses on the first Ripple bottles. And 
Do you want to clip the slideshow real quick? You get to see a picture of how we turned our uh, dorm room into a whole distribution center. <laughs> um, my bed's actually behind all of those boxes. You, you can't even see it. But to do laundry, to give you perspective, I would have to throw my clothes over the boxes, put it back in a laundry basket, and take it down the hall to do laundry. It was, it was absolutely bonkers what we, what we were doing. But from March until October, we ended up selling our first thousand ripple bottles because that's what it was going to take for us to be able to drill a well. And then go ahead, next slide. In October, I went over to Uganda and we ended up building the first ever modern solar powered well for a village in Uganda. So to give more perspective to what that means, uh, typically in the past, nonprofits will come in, they'll drill borehole wells, and it'll be powered by a hand crank pump. So you pump this thing up and down, up and down. And you can just imagine a thousand, two thousand people in a community doing that every single day. They say it lasts for 20 years, but it usually breaks down in about five years. So we worked with local engineers to come up with a better solution, one that was going to be more sustainable. We drill into the ground the same way as before, but we use solar energy in a pump to bring the water from the ground up into a water tower like you see here in the States. And then we distribute it just like you turn on the water faucets here in the bathrooms. They just turn on and off. But with this first village, we gave more than 2,000 people access to clean water and we were able to run two water lines into different elementary schools with this new model. And it's safe to say that this was one of the proudest moments of my life. <laughs> I mean, you can see these kids smiling faces and I go to bed at night knowing that they're, they have clean water and for generations to come, they're gonna have clean water. And it just blows my mind to think that some kid in his dorm room just decided to make a difference and like their lives are changed right? they're gonna go to school. It, it's such everything. And so I just went back to Uganda here, it would have been April, yeah. And I get to visit them again, this first village, which was Katibi. They had already helped, or we, we'd already worked with them to put tax infrastructures in place where 2,000 shillings per household is contributed each month, which is about 75 cents. Um, but with that money, they've already started running electricity to where there was no electricity before. And that's like the power of the ripple effect. And do you want to continue? Um, so originally I said that we weren't going to start our own nonprofit um, because I don't like asking for money but I wanted more control over the impact. So we did end up starting our own nonprofit, but that was just as an alternative. Our main priority is utilizing the for-profit business to fund our own nonprofit works. And there's been other people who wanted to contribute just to the nonprofit and it gives them that option. But we've got a team of 12 on the ground in Uganda at all times that's led by an alumni of my university. His name's Michael Balumba. He was already going into these low-income communities over in Uganda and teaching them income-producing skills because uh, knowledge is power over there. And so we worked with him over the course of six months and developed that solution that I just talked about. And uh, we, we've been able to, to do a lot of great work. Not only is our wells using accessible parts and simplistic designs, but we also educate and organize a whole council to oversee the, see the wells maintenance. So that way it'll be used forever. And so not only is there this high quality mission here, but there's a high quality product to back it. Our bottles are 32 ounces. Uh, they're right there, I was gonna pass them around, but didn't get around to it. So yeah, if you could. Um, they're 32 ounces, they're BPA free, made of premium gauge stainless steel. They're gonna keep your water icy cold for 24 hours and your coffee and tea hot for up to 12. And then sometimes it's a fan favorite to let you know that a whole bottle of wine fits in a bottle. <laughs> um, I was just saying. <laughs> um, but it's yeah, a high quality sorry. bottle, and on the back side of the bottle is the village name and uh, GPS coordinates and graves. So we're working, I almost coded the map to go on our website to show the pictures and videos to where that bottle connects to. Uh, almost done with that. Um, but yeah, if you line up a ripple bottle, a hydro flask, and a Yeti, it's coming from the same manufacturer as Hydro Flask, and we're selling it for a little bit less on top of this amazing social impact attached to it. And so I won't touch a, a whole bunch of it on this um, because it's more for the competition's sake, but our growth plan, plan looks like this. While well, being a full-time college student, we sold more than 8,000 of these bottles in just a year and two months now. Um, in 2022, our goal is to build 25 wells, so we are well on track with that. 
But the main thing is, is we've done all this without any dollars in advertising spent. I have not advertised on Facebook, Instagram, nothing. This has just been networking, word of mouth. It, it, it's been awesome. And so we don't even have any retail locations yet. So when I graduate, that's what we're going to enter into. And when we do that with 400 mid-sized retailers selling 25 bottles a month, we'll be able to generate enough revenue to drill 20, no, to drill uh, 10 wells and impact 25,000 people every single month. And that's what, that's what really excites me the most. And then our five-year goal is that by 2026, um, at, at $10 million in ancillary sales, we'll be able to give 1 million people clean water every year. And at that point, we'll have created enough demand with the retailers that we are working to open the only um, stainless steel reusable water bottle manufacturing plant in the whole United States. There's not a single one right now. And we'll actually decrease cost per unit because the rising costs in China along with shipping. Shipping containers have gone from $3,000 to $28,000 during COVID. I don't anticipate them going down any soon. So I want to bring operations back here to the U.S. And our bottles are currently being stored in a warehouse over in Maslin. That would be the future home to the manufacturing operations. Got to work with some engineers on exact designs, but we have it roughly built out and some of the investors are ready to go on that subsidiary company. But, but our overarching goal is by 2031, we really believe, and I really think it's possible, that we'll be able to get 10 million people clean water by that. Um, so I'm standing here telling you all these amazing things, not because of my efforts alone. Uh, we have a, just a phenomenal team. Uh, there's, there's six of us now from over four universities in Ohio. Some of the stories and how we met, I, 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 don't, I don't even know how it happened. Uh, one of our, our biggest players on our team, his name's Zach Kane, he's from Xavier University, but this man is just obsessed with solving the water crisis. Just absolutely just cares about it. That's all he thinks about and so he actually messaged me on LinkedIn. I'd never known him before. I don't even know how he found me still. And he was like, hey, like, can we just have a conversation? I saw you doing something really, really cool. Like, sure, yeah, I can hop on a Zoom call. And it's just turned into this fabulous partnership. It just, I just that story just highlights um, the power of the internet and everything that you can accomplish from it. So I was, my personal background, I, I, it's not great. Um, I don't want to get too Debbie Downer here, but I didn't have much of a family when I started this, and we've really been able to create one. And so when I, when I started this, our goal was to build one well in our first year. And the world answered. <laughs> we built 20. Um, we've been able to give water to more than 50,000 human beings on the other side of the world. And these pictures here are just it's, it's from one of my favorite stories. Uh, it was from Beautiful Feet Orphanage. And to give you some background, they have this brother um, of Christian instruction that's there that helps lead the orphanage. And he was reaching out to 15 different organizations asking for help for clean water for over nine months. He reached out over to hundreds of organizations. And one day he finally had stumbled upon Ripple sent us a message on Instagram asking for help, showing us pictures. And to be honest, I really didn't believe that that, that picture right there, that, that's where they were getting their water from. It was a hole that they, had, they dug in the ground at the bottom of a hill where they collected rainwater at. I was like, no way this is real. Like, I, I've been over there. It, I, I did not see that the first time I was there. So I had our team in Uganda go and visit and verify the story. It was all real. Um, these kids had been going down to the bottom of the hill at 5 a.m. collecting water from that hole. <laughs> and it, it, it tore me apart. Um, before, I guess not, I guess that part, but so knowing that there was such like urgency around this problem because it was every day and until we, we solved the problem for them that they were going to continue going to this hole. So I worked directly with donors on this one rather than selling a thousand bottles because that takes a little more time. And in 10 days, I got to send them a message back, uh, letting them know that they were going to have clean water. And that's why I wake up every morning because you never know when you're going to be able to impact lives like this. Before we had given them clean water the month prior, out of the 400 kids that attend that, that school and, and live at the orphanage, 112 had contracted malaria and 12 had typhoid. 
They were using all their money that they needed for food on medicine for these kids because they had dirty water and they were getting sick. And now that's, that's not the case. And I'm super proud to be a part of the team that was able to make that all happen. Go ahead. And uh, yeah, that's for the most part, that's, I can tell a lot more stories, but I'll leave it open to, to questions and answers now. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Do we have two mics? Yeah. Cool. Just for the Zoom people. Yeah. Thank you so much, Joe. I know uh, so much of the stories even changed in the few weeks since we met and uh, some of the updates. And please don't shy away from talking about the business side too, because of course, you know, we are, um, you know, a, a philanthropic organization as our their club and service above self, which you fully embody, but, you know, we're, we're, we're largely a folks that operate in the business world as well. So my point is don't feel like you got to shy away from the business stuff too. We find okay. that fascinating. Um, get questions, some of our, where do we want to start? I have a question. Oh, all right. Thank oh. you, Katie. Thank you. All right. Bill Mandy. And then I see a Karen over there. I'll rip the business question off because I manage a venture fund. Okay. What's your guys' plan for this next phase of fund? Uh, we've been all privately held. We are like, so we started with $14,000 that I had in my bank account saved up, spent it all. And now we're sitting with over $70,000 in our account ready for the next inventory cycle. But we are reaching a point where like, I'm considering, I want to go with debt because when somebody gives me money, I make a lot more money and create a lot of impact with it. But I don't know if I can get $750,000 worth of debt. And because I want the next key Hires are going to be a chief marketing officer and uh, a sales manager, somebody that's within the industry working on corporate connections. Because corporate connections is, has been our moneymaker. Uh, we partnered with Shimatsu, a multi billion dollar healthcare company, where they bought a thousand bottles. They're flying me down next week to speak at their sales convention. And for every piece of equipment sold during the year, they're actually going to pair with a box of Ripple bottles, um, just creating like the recurring revenue of that. Um, in a sense, um, but also like we partnered with Blue Rhino already to get them bottles. There was a company out of Kentucky called Newman Tractor. We sold 500 bottles and they also donated $25,000. Uh, we've partnered officially on the nonprofit side with Procter & Gamble, um, but then that'll lead into them purchasing over 100,000 units next year as their Christmas gifts. They're in the transition phase of going from the sachet packets that filters water, but these communities have become too dependent on it. So now they're moving towards well digging operations. Technically, unofficially, not in writing, we're their lead partner on children's safe drinking water, their well digging operations. And that will lead into the, like a three or $4 million purchase order. Um, no, that, that's awesome. But again, all of us are here to help. You can yeah. touch with me. Would, would be happy to help walk in with people because that impact investment piece is really, really, there's a huge focus on that stuff right now. Yeah, and you're doing a great job. I got to come in. It's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I guess the biggest help we need is I, I'm a little ignorant of how that all works, to be honest. I, I know we'll probably, we, we probably need about $750,000 to do what I really want to do. That'll get us to about $5 million a year, I think, in sales. And then from there, maybe a little bit more to get to like 10 to 20. I just know how to sell water bottles really good and tell a really good story. And good things usually happen from there. You guys looked into the student venture fund. I know Wall Street University is part of it. There's like, there's eight universities around here that are part of a, a student venture fund. Actually, Dan Hampu's in this building who runs it. Um, but if nothing else, it gives you a huge network of other students that are in this space, but they also invest and then help uh, people get ready to invest more money. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm sure there's probably some students from Wall Street. Uh, yeah, one other. Hi, <laughs> this is awesome. How are you doing? Um, I work for a community foundation. We're always talking to people about not starting a new nonprofit and instead um, partnering with ones that are already in existence. So if you could talk a little bit more about like you wanted to start without starting your own nonprofit and why you felt that you then had to do it was my first question. The second part is, um, have you thought about 
uh, water access and partnering with nonprofits here, such as on some of our Native American um, uh, areas, there's still problems in Michigan. We had the um, issue with water in Cleveland. We have a lead pipe issue. So we have kids here that don't have access to the water. So I know if you've thought about investing there too. Absolutely. Um, so on the nonprofit side, what we decided on our own initially was most nonprofits for what we're doing, charge about $20,000. If you want it done really, if you want it done really well, like we're doing it, there's a lot of overhead fees because, well, they have employees here in the United States and it's not free to live here in the United States. So there's a lot of overhead costs there that we just don't incur on the nonprofit side by running it on our own. Um, speaking to the parts about water crisis here in the U.S., we've actually looked into the Native American um, issue more out West as well as Flint, Michigan. But the difference between what we're solving and what they're solving is there's, at least in Flint, Michigan, there's just more of a maintenance problem with the government and we can't have the ties with the government, like, like in the sense that like they decide what actions are going to take place and it's not as much of an access problem. So if you go over to Uganda, there's, I want to say 20 million people there that just don't have water, but it's right underneath of them. You, you dig a hundred feet into the ground and you have plenty of water. Like they're so resource rich over there. They just need help accessing it. And so that's what we're more focused on, but we do want to tie something here. About, ooh, sorry, air bubble. Um, we do want to tie, tie impact here in the United States, which is why we're focused on opening that the only U.S. reusable stainless steel manufacturing plant. But on the water side, it's more international. Thank you, Joe. Anyone else here, Dan? I can't believe uh, the altruism or the uh, self-sacrifice that you're doing. I can't tell you how much money you would personally make <clears throat> if uh, if you decided to, you know, make this a for-profit instead of sending money to Uganda, because just the product itself is amazing. Uh, considering just a glancing at the quality, it seems every bit as good as Yeti. Am I yes, yes, it is. Um, so there, it's, it's, it's a two-pronged approach because it, in order to solve the water crisis, it's going to take $100 billion every single year for five years consecutively. Right now, the nonprofit sector is only able to contribute $8 billion a year. So in order to bridge that gap, we believe that you have to lean on the, the private sector or the for-profit side, which is why technically, the, so there's the LLC with the bottles. We sell the bottles, there's profit in the bottles to be able to grow the business. Now, separately, there's organizations that just like to give us money to go donate or to go create impact. And so we'll say, accept the donations to go directly build the wells. Yeah, but sometimes the donations, they want you to have a 501c3 we have organization to receive that money. So I don't, I yeah, we do. We, we have two different organizations. So we have Ample Solutions LLC that works and sells these bottles. Um, and then completely separate is we are the Ripple nonprofit. That's 501c3 certified and can accept tax deduction donations. And you got a board and all this. Yes. Okay. Well, you sound yeah. like you've done a lot of work. Uh, I volunteer at a place called SCORE which advises volunteers, I mean, advises nonprofits, and I don't think you need our help. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so like just speaking a little more to it, Procter & Gamble has now started off by just working with our nonprofit, but that partnership is going to lead into business for the LLC on the bottom side. And, and then just just because I think the group's fascinating, but on the for-profit side too, some of those partnerships you had on the screen, like Kroger, Coca-Cola, other yep. names there, you partnered on the for-profit side as far, correct? Yeah, so we're in conversations with the, the two of them. Um, the Coca-Cola partnership, we've actually talked with their CEO. What that looks like is, does anybody remember their Share a Coke campaign? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so on the side of the Coke can, it would say Share a Coke with Namagare, or the, the community that's on the side of the bottle. And they donate one cent per can um, because they're already donating more than that. It's just a good marketing play. So our slot, our pitch deck that they asked us to make is currently roaming around Atlanta somewhere right now, um, but they take a long time to get back to us uh, just because they're a huge organization. On the Kroger side, we had their buying agent reach out to us. Their initial order would look something like 25,000 um, units as an initial order, about 15,000 units per month. So 25 wells, 15 wells per month. It'd be amazing. 
Um, but that would make up a, a majority of our portfolio uh, of revenue every single month. And I don't want to be tied to Kroger making or breaking our business, especially with the supply chain right now. So that's why we're focused on the 400 mid-sized retailers and building out that side of it is where Kroger can make up 20 or 30% or Dick's Sporting Goods can make up 20%. So that way we're not vulnerable to Sally having a bad day at Kroger. I don't know. I hope nobody's named Sally. <laughs> That's fantastic, Joe. Any other uh, questions in here or online? And again, I, uh, Joe, because we didn't have the bylaws vote, I know we've got some buffer in here, um, but uh, you know, please, uh, we're, we're a group, of course, of, of folks that have a heart for service, but a lot of business minds in the room online and that couldn't be here today too. So yeah. I know any of us would be willing and able to come alongside you from a connection standpoint even after the meeting, just connection wise. And just uh, was truly blown away by your story, Joe, and, and uh, again, your heart for service, but also your business mind and what you've been able to accomplish. Um, Joe's got some great stories as well too. You would imagine trips to Africa, but I was still that the first trip over there, he told me about getting basically held up at gunpoint. And I think after that, that's when you discovered that the bottle can hold a whole bottle of wine, right? You needed some wine. Yeah, after it it <laughs> yeah when, I, when I went over, it was, it was March, uh, no, it was October of 2021 and Uganda was still in military lockdown. I was supposed to go with two other people. They... I don't want to say chickened out, but they, they didn't end up going for their, they didn't think it was safe enough at the last second. But I just felt so called that I needed to go there. I needed to see the impact so I could come back and tell these stories and influence people. And part of that I did run into was uh, there was a military lockdown. And so they had tanks that where you had to go in and out of like different counties is what it's similar to here. Um, and they wanted a bribe and I would not carry around any money with me because I refused to pay a bribe. And looking back, I wish I would have paid a bribe because they put an AR-15 in my chest and was asking for money. Um, but that's like, to put it into perspective, that's how much conviction I have in this and helping people. And like the whole model is like, I went back a second time and I'm about to go back a third time. And like, I, I truly believe in it. But on a business perspective, because I know there's a lot of business owners in here, people that do that sort of activities. Um, to, so where our bread and butter is, is corporate partnerships or business partnerships in the sense that, like I said, you can line up the Hydroflask, the Ripple, and the Yeti all side by side. What we're really offering is a solution where they were already going to buy this product branded with their logo on the back. So number one, we're going to save them money. Number two, they're helping to reach their sustainability goals for plastic within the organization, but they can also advertise that they're helping reach the UN sustainability goal of accessing the clean water. And then third, they get a kick-ass PR story from this. Like, I can't, like, they, they've helped introduce us to other people with, like, news interviews and stuff, but they themselves, like, there's been other organizations that told me they got partnerships because they handed out our bottles at trade shows and got to tell our story to their future customers. And then like, that's what we're really offering. Direct to consumer, yeah, we offer the same great bottle. It's great. Like we do well direct to consumer, but the corporate partnerships, bread and butter. Um, oh yeah, Jim, that's great show. Thank you. Hey, great presentation. You're gonna make a great Rotarian. <laughs> So what other products besides this canister, you know, the whole Yeti from the, the cups to the coolers, are you guys dreaming a little bit outside of just that one? Yeah, so right now we have 10,000 more of those um, 32 ounces on the way, but we also have our tumblers. Um, and from there, we've got a lot of traction on the uh, 20 ounce bottles, because depending on your car, most of the time it fits in a car, sometimes it doesn't, and those people are just love the 20 ounces so we're working to transition to that as well but yeah people are people want every single product that's being offered through yeti and hydroflask but they want it through us with the social impact patch hi i have a question um have you heard of katie spots katie sailed by herself uh for fresh water okay. uh, across the ocean and she is in the Cleveland market. Yes. I would highly encourage you to reach out to Katie. Okay. Via social media, LinkedIn. Yep. Uh, she's written a book and she would be a great asset to your team. Yeah. That, now that you say that, the story, yeah, I've definitely heard the story. 
And I would encourage you to get involved with Rotary. You would have access to 1.2 million members worldwide. Uh, uh, yeah. I, all right, so a little more background on myself. I was actually Interact president for my high school, which is like the high school version. And I gotta say thank you, you guys, but like my local chapter gave me the Rotary scholarship my senior year. So I, I have a strong tie to Rotary in the sense that my grandpa's been a Rotarian for I don't know how many years. He always brought me growing up, but this feels like home. <laughs> Well, I did not know that, so that's even better. All right, you just endeared yourself to the folks in this room, and I might even more. Hello. So that was amazing, and you are so dynamic. It's good to hear. So this club is the main project of the Rotary Camp of Children with Special Needs, and so not only are they business people, but they help to raise money. So you, and I'm a development professional, so my job, oh, sorry, Cheryl. So I, my job at camp is to raise money from the director of development, and you have such a way about you. So I know you say you're not comfortable raising money. Yeah. You are dynamic, yeah. and you need to be in front of the people and tell your stories because that's what's gonna that's what's gonna bring you money. So you know I'm happy to meet with you, happy to help connect you in the yeah. fundraising world. So congratulations, amazing. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Um, for, okay, I think uh, Lana, I'll hand it back over to you and we'll have a few minutes and then if anyone, Joe, if you've got a couple of minutes, I don't know your schedule, if yeah. anyone wants to touch base with you afterwards and make connections and then, of course, I'm always happy to, with your permission, share your information. I would also so, like it. So. Great. Joe, thank you so, so, so much. Thanks, I have a question for you, though. Okay. Did you bring any of those bottles with you today to sell? I brought three. We're currently restocking. <laughs> um, so we got to go over to the warehouse and, and engrave the, the new village. We actually just built a, a, a new well yesterday, and I got to go pick up the, uh, the new bottles that have Namagare on the back for our next village. Well, I can tell you personally, as a boat owner um, out at Portage Lakes, those would be great on my boats with some. Um, libations that would be fabulous to take out so I wouldn't get caught with anything other than what was possibly in those water bottles. Right? Water bottles. Yeah. <laughs> and then our website is www.wearetheripple um, and then we are the ripple on Instagram and everything like that. So <laughs> there it is at the bottom right there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joe. Oh, it's right at the bottom of the screen. So if you want to, if you have your cell phone with you, you can take it out and maybe take a photo of it. But thanks, Joe. It, incredible. Uh, charisma, um, a presentation that is, you know, to be proud of. So congratulations. Keep up the good work. Keep us informed. Um, you're part of our family. So please, uh, please keep in touch because we'd like to be able to follow you and see what good things that you continue to do. So Godspeed. Wow, that's a tough act to follow. Um, thanks again. Um, Katie, you coordinated. Um, okay, Connor, thank you, thank you. Good job. Good. It's uh, fabulous. Okay, uh, Mr. Uh, Hall, Rafa. I think you have something to do. Joe, can you pick a winner of one ticket here for me? All right, get your tickets out. Two two eight one four three. One four three. Woohoo! Cheryl. <laughs> Congratulations to Cheryl. Good job. Well, thanks, Katie, for uh, picking up my tickets and any card, All two right, diamonds. She picked the two diamonds, so that doesn't win progressive five. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I'd also like to thank um, Cheryl for her efforts today and uh, the crew that zipped in here and put out the flags and the banners. Uh, it's a uh, it's a one man or one woman operation and we couldn't do it without everybody here. So thanks to the team that came in and woke us up today and 
gave us the energy for today's presentation. Connor, thank you also. Um, any other wonderful things that need to be discussed before I ring the bell and wish you all a happy Tuesday? Anything online? Anybody like to say anything online? All well online. It's good to see you. Bye, Jack Herrick and Vivian. It's good to see you. And thank you to, to all to being here. And again, a plug for the bylaws. We need 47 bodies between online and here. Please make the effort to come uh, be with us, especially in person. Again, we need 47 people to have a quorum to pass our bylaws. So if nothing else, the meeting is adjourned. Have a great day.